Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, today we're going to be going over uh, Osoto uh, from the Goon Step, uh, a little bit of overhook, um, what to do with the common reaction when they retract that leg, and uh, how to combo up with Sasai. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, so this is me and my roommate practicing, and you're going to get like a pretty quick view of this Osoto right here. Yeah, just like your basic Osoto. Um, so we're kind of practicing from this over under or like it really whatever kind of neutral tie up you want, like a head and an arm or whatever. He's going from over under. I tend to go head and arm when practicing. Um, so right now we're going to be working on the goon step and uh, let's just watch that last rep one more time. So he takes this goon step in. He jumps with his back leg, which is something like I generally don't like doing. Yeah, so he jumps with that back leg, which I try and avoid doing. And you see how he barely puts any weight on those toes. He kind of just puts enough weight to jump easily. We actually want to take a step and take them over that. The finish on this is nice, though. He gets a nice Osoto, throws me up pretty good. I land nice. Um, but we want to get like a nicer bike with that goon step. So like something that makes this throw a goon step is the fact that we're taking that step down. And you see how he planned his foot flat there? We really want to try and avoid that. We want to try and get that leg to be like the toes on the ground. So we want to actually pull the toes back. You see, he has a nice hook here, right? This hook is good, but it's not going to step down. We actually want to step on it to make it that goon step. So we actually want to actually take a physical step here. We don't just want to, you know, kind of hook and then jump in. Because as you jump, it really opens you up to a counter. But if you step down and you kind of win this step battle, then you can win easy on the back end. So by actually pulling the toes back and hooking, right, and then pushing them, forcing them to try and retreat. But that hook blocks the retreat and you can kind of just reap them as they lean backwards. So it's really important that you take that step and you win that battle. So you're pulling them. Okay, got a little gun shy there. It's okay. Sometimes you enter into a rep and just does not feel right. Let's, let's examine that rep one more time. Okay, so as we're coming in here, he hooks a little low on the hook and he steps down on the toe but it's a little bit late. And you see how I'm not retreating at all? I'm kind of just standing there. So if I was of a more devious mind, I would be, since I'm on balance here, I could have made a move, right? He has to kind of bring me out of position. So I have to try and move back into position before I can try and attempt a counter. Here, I could just attempt a counter because I'm on balance. I'm standing neutral. He's not really won anything yet. It's not till here that he starts getting a lean on me. And now he should have, I should have already been in the air by now. But he's still leaning, leaning, leaning. And finally, he is able to complete the throw. So, you know, we really want to focus on being able to, like, take that goon step and pull them out of position. Um, yeah, so that is really important in this technique that we get that nice hook. So this is something that the, we were practicing earlier in the day, which is just, uh, you know, finishing the Osoto by winning the head and the arm, which are like, you know, core concepts. You must know how to do that in order to finish an Osoto. The goon step is like a more complex, practical application of those principles. Yeah. So I'm just talking about goon step. So here I'm going to show a goon step rep, step and throw. I think I'm going to show it one more time here. And uh, for this one, I'm going to slow it down so we can kind of talk and break it down. So here I'm starting with one hand on the head and one hand on the arm. I don't want this over under. Um, I can do it from the over under, but this position is just like feels better. This is like more judo to me. And this position is relatively hard to get in a no gi situation. Um, you can sometimes get to a sit like a position like this by doing like a elbow pass and then coming in, waiting for them to face and then grabbing the head. Um, 
but that is again like you know it's very quick it's very hard to get to this place um but when i do get here it's by grabbing the arm first and then grabbing the head second when i grab the head first people tend to get more defensive where when their arm is grabbed they feel like it's a little bit less important um so here I take my first step. So you see how high I bring my leg and I sneak it down right behind his knee. I retract and you see he's already, I haven't even taken this step, right? My foot hasn't even hit the ground and he's already stepping backwards. So if he's stepping back with his right leg first, then his next step will need to be a left step. But I've blocked his left step with my hook. So me blocking that left step with my hook, right? And not just, you know, heel to heel where he could kind of just sidestep me, but I've actually hooked it where he needs to move his leg forward and around. So if he doesn't have time to do that, so now I'm taking my second step and I unhook for some reason. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like that rep, I guess. So now I step in I get him to shift his weight back. He like goes, it's very subtle, his weight shift. I lean away, I pull the arm and the head to me. As soon as I feel like his hip is resting on my thigh, I start reaping with the leg and it becomes a nice big throw. I hold on to the head after, make sure he doesn't slam his head on the ground. This can be a really hard throw, so. You know, just take care of your partners with this one. Um, really fun to practice, but it's definitely going to make you practice your ukemi too. Um, so here he's going to go back to this over under something he likes. Um, you can really practice this technique for anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Here I'm going to do it from an overhook. So I find myself in the overhook a lot more than this like head position. Um, so it's just how do we find our way across the body from this overhook? So if we're standing in this overhook, you have to take a step across to get to that position. My boy's going to do it from an underhook because he's crazy. Um, okay, you do it from an underhook too. I find it's a little cramped in there when you do it from an underhook. So I tend to go more overhook on it. Um, but you have to find some way to step across and close the distance between your reaping leg and there, the leg that will be reaped right there. And then goon step in. Um, yeah, so you have to kind of move into position without them like following you and moving out of position. Yeah. So here he steps a little too far. So he's gonna have to probably reposition like that to get to the Osoto. And remember, every step you take is another step your opponent can also take. So when he repositions, I will move out of position. So I'm going to, you know, take that extra step to reposition myself. So here we're going to talk about like a very common reaction, which is they step back, not away, but back with that leg. So I'm actually going to do that for him. If he steps back, I miss that reap. So you'll have a lot of savvy people. When you take that angle, they step back. So when you take the angle, their next step will be to step back. And once they step back, we can start actually employing a sasai. As you see here, it didn't step back and you just step right into it. So that back step is like a, when you feel them moving into position, you move out of position by taking that back step. So here, we're going to talk a little bit about the sasai. So here, I take that step in. He steps back. Here, I'll back it up just one more. Um, so I take that step in and sasai. Now, I like this technique a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's a great one to work. Um, not the easiest technique to do. I like to say Osoto is the first technique you learn, but the last one you master. But that being said, it's a really fun technique. Really great. Keep working it. 
Um, if there's any techniques you guys want to get breakdowns on, just, you know, let me know. Shoot me a DM. Um, comment in the section below. Um, you know, I appreciate all the support. Peace, guys.